Hey, good morning. It's uh, early Friday morning. I'm going to try to knock this out in the next 10 minutes before uh, the lights automatically cut out my room when I'm not moving around, as well as class is going to start soon. So I'm going to do 10 minutes of review of the kind of multiple choice Google form that you probably have done already. If not, uh, I would suggest following along now and doing them before I give the answers. Uh, and given that I'm only going to give myself about 10 minutes, um, I may not get through everything. So let's find it. So in the classroom, there's a bunch of homework I'm loading up with to help you study for the test next week. Uh, and that's not it. Uh, here it is online. Uh, here it is right here. And very first one. Uh, first of all, you should know what angles are in general, how big they are. So, so this angle up here, and I'm going to try to do this on my touch screen. And I'm not sharing my screen yet. You're like, what the heck is he looking at? Uh, let me do that again. Share screen. There we go. So I went to the classroom first and I opened up this unit one two online practice quiz. All right. Um, so generally, like you should know that the I'm going to annotate, uh, you know, like an angle that's this size is roughly 30 degrees. But if we've got it on a protractor here, we can measure from here to here and we can see that's, you know, uh, 10, 20. 30, 35, that is, you know, 37 degrees for angle D, A, E. And you've got to, there's five angle A's down here, four angle A's, I can't count, one, two, three, four, four angle A's uh, that are sectioned. And so we need to specify. So E, A, F, uh, that is E, A, F. E, A, F is this angle right here. Okay, E from E to A, to F, and I'm really spending more time on this than I need to because some people still don't know that. There's no way to get this answer right if you don't know EAF is here. So this right here, measuring from this side, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 52 is what that is, 52. If I was measuring from over here, if it was BAE, I'd go over this side, and this is what the inside numbers are for. Once again, 0, 10, 20, 30, it would be 127 because 127 and 52 Add up to 180. Okay, uh, let me clear all that and scroll down and say 52. Oh, it saved my answer from last time. That five was already there. Okay, uh, which is a rectangle. So once again, trapezoid, parallelogram, square. No, square is D. Uh, rectangle is C, even though it looks like a square. It's marked as such. That's a rhombus, even though it kind of looks like a square. And that is a nondescript. Uh, Parallel, uh, the nondescript quadrilateral. That's all we know about S. So, what's our answer here? Uh, we're looking for a rectangle. So, rectangle C. All right. Um, oh, but I'm not going to go over all these, but uh, five squared, I'm going to write on, on my, go back to my annotation here. Uh, I've got five squared plus B squared, because I don't know what that side is. Those are my two legs, equals six squared. Okay, so I know that 25 plus B squared is equal to 36. I got to subtract 25 from both sides. So I end up getting B squared equals 20, 36 minus 25 is what? Um, doing this right, right? Uh, 11. So my answer is, when I take the square root of both sides, is this B is equal to the square root of 11. Uh, and I ask you here to write it like something root three. So I'm guessing here, some of you, I, I need to probably go update this. If you write square root 11, that that'll check. But uh, I think the answer here is square root 11. But based on the way that it's telling me to do this, I'm guessing they're asking me, I'm going to update this. So it'll take the other way we write it. So root 11 or uh, whatever the square root 11 is, I'm going to guess. I'm going to say that's 3.2. It may be 3.3, in which case it's going to check this wrong. I don't have my calculator in front of me. Uh, same kind of question. Just going to draw the picture real quick. Uh, legs that measure three and seven. So in this case, I got three, I got seven, I got some X. So we know that X squared is equal to nine plus 49, because those are my two things squared. And so when I take the square root of that, it's going to be the square root of 58, which I'm hoping is one of the answers over there. And that's the way that they were asking me to write it last time. Um, there's just different ways that teachers like to write it. All right, so that is this, uh, 58. Uh, another one, just going to draw the picture out. I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to let you figure that one out. 
Um, hopefully you recognize that as Pythagorean theorem. Oh, let's just review these. Uh, a is a linear pair because it's a line with a pair of angles. This is just an obtuse angle. It's probably how I would describe it is B. Uh, these would be adjacent angles, or you could say it's two acute, uh, two acute angles um, to it, but adjacent is probably the word that you want to know there. And then A and B represent vertical angles. So since I'm asking for a linear pair, it's A and B. Um, oops. Uh, oh, between negative three, eight and one, two, what's the length? So once again, if I wanted to, uh, I could, uh, ooh, shoot, that's not what I wanted to do. Sure. If I wanted to, I could make a little right triangle here and say, well, one, two, three, four, five. It's six by four. And I could do six squared plus four squared to figure out the length. Or I could use my distance formula, which is uh, I could subtract my x's, no, my y's. Oops, I kind of did this wrong. Plus subtract my x's. Usually you do the x's first. And if we do it that way, same answer, it's negative six squared, which will become positive 36, and negative four squared, which will become positive 16. Same 36 and 16. So 36 plus 16 is, um, oh, there may be more than correct one correct answer down here. Sometimes I'll put multiple correct answers, but I know square root of 36 plus 16 works. Um, parallel lines, so B is parallel. Hopefully you recognize, oh, they're not marked as parallel, but you only have choices. So these really probably should have markings on them to know they're parallel, but it's multiple choice. Uh, a would be perpendicular. C would be uh, just a straight line or a straight angle. And then once again, D would be an obtuse angle. So we're gonna go with B, even though it's not marked because it's multiple choice, not the best picture. Vertical line of symmetry. Uh, vertical line of symmetry is uh, straight up and down. So our vertical line is there. This one has rotational symmetry because I can spin it halfway around, it's the same. This one has no symmetry. Oh wait, this one has horizontal symmetry. Uh, this one also has rotational symmetry and the R has none, okay? There's no way to split that so it folds over on itself. All right, so let me clear all my drawings. That's gonna be T. Uh, following transformation, this is getting bigger. So we know that is a dilation. Oh, I don't have transmogrification there. I usually have that as a, as a choice. It's a made up thing. Calvin Hobbes like to use. Uh, BCA. So when I when I do these kind of matchings, this, these congruent statements, they, things have to match up. So the B clearly matches up to the unmarked E. The, the C, which is next, matches up to the marked F. And then the A, so BCA is gonna be, should be EFD. I'm hoping I'm getting this right. We'll find out shortly. Um, this is another was this one time we're doing slope. So if I've got it in the picture, negative one, three, down three and over one, I can count and it should be negative three over one. That should be right. Or I can use the slope formula, which is y1, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Subtract my y's, that's my rise over, subtract my, my x's, that's my run. Uh, midpoint. Midpoint, we know it's got to land in the middle somewhere here. So the midpoint is somewhere in here and we can identify it, but this is one where I actually like to use the, uh, the formula. So the formula here is I add my x's, so my six plus my negative two divided by two is four over two, or two is the x value of my midpoint. So it's going to be here somewhere. And then when I do my y's, my four plus my negative four over two, which is zero over two or zero. So that's gonna be right uh, here. It looks like two zero. Uh, let's clear all that and scroll down. And two zero, there we go. Hopefully that's right. Oh, let's go through the symbols real quick. That's a line, that's a segment. So just points on the end if we were gonna draw it. This is starting at A, going through B and continuing on forever. That's an arc, we haven't done that one. It would be a portion of a kind of a line on a circle. Uh, perpendicular, parallel, congruent. This is a pr uh, probably going to be similar, although some people might say it's approximately. And then the last one is a triangle or a delta, depending on what you think it looks like. So perpendicular is the upside down T, so we're going to say E. Uh, what's the equation? These two things have to be equal to each other, so that should be in the list there. I think that's it. 
No, they're not equal to each other. That's a mistake. They have to add up to 180. That's the next problem. These two are vertical angles, or these two are a linear pair. Okay, so uh, so I have to set these equal to each other and solve them, and I don't remember what the answer is. Up, oh, my ten minutes is up. My lights just went out, uh, so I'm going to wrap things up here. Um, I'm moving, so my lights turn back on. Uh, let's see what we got. I'm going to see if there's anything that I want to. You know, all of these you're going to see the answers. Triangles got to add up to 180. So because this is isosceles, this has to be 50. We have to know this is isosceles for this to be 50. But if then that's 50, we know the whole thing's got to be 180. So that's got to be 80. Okay. Uh, okay. And what's left? Uh, EF, EGF. EGF is the straight line there. So that's kind of a trick question because a lot of people are going to say 70 because they're thinking, oh, yeah, the other angle 70. That's not what it's asking for. The other angle would be what? That's right, HGF. So, um, okay. For this one, if you know all these angles. E has got to be 70 because it's vertical. G has got to be 90 because it's vertical. And the J, I, and H have to add up to 180. So uh, which one are they asking for here? Oh, that one's easy. That one's going to be a 90. But if they ask me for I or F, uh, they're going to be both be 20. Um, okay, that's the same kind of problem. Okay, once again, we've got another isosceles triangle. So we know that, um, let's see, A is 100, which means these two are the same because they're opposite, even though they don't look like it. These opposite angles here have to be the same, same way if I had it drawn a little bit better. These two have to be the same. Pretend this one is the 100. So we know we've got 80 to split between those two. So these are both 40. Okay. Uh, clear all. And we're almost done, I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. BAC is 120, so if BAC, where's B, uh, BAC, BAC, so once again, BAC, do that on your paper, or actually on your screen, that's 120, which means all these other obtuse angles are 120, and these acute angles down here, because these are parallel lines, have to all be 60, now what did we ask for, FBA, let me change colors, FBA, F, B, A is also 120, which happens to be a corresponding angle. Those are corresponding angles. Okay, that's the bell. I really do have to, uh, and let me just double check and make sure there's anything that's really critical. Perpendicular, opposite reciprocal slopes. I'll let you figure that one out on your own. We've done slope, we've done slope. Um, you know what a square should be. Uh, intersecting, but not perpendicular. I think it would be that one because they've got different slopes. They don't have the same slope, so they're not parallel, but they're not opposite reciprocal. Like this one right here, those are opposite reciprocals. Those, those are actually perpendicular. So I think that's the answer for that one. You'll find out when you check it. Make sure you check your answers. Uh, you can figure out slope, you know, midpoint. You're just plugging this in 10 equals 2x plus 1. You can do that in my head. I think it's going to be 4 and a half. And that's it. All right. So check your answers and uh, send me an email if you got questions. Bye.